let's just start recording anyway. All right, we are now live. Um, this is supposed to be to the Frumis page. It seems to be going to the Lodi page. That makes me upset. Um, so what can I do? It is what it is. Uh, it was supposed to go to the Frumis page, though, not the not the Lodi page. I get my my pages get all confused when I broadcast from 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 this thing. Um, so it is what it is. That's all that it is. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. Um, yeah, we had a we had a little mishap here at a uh, Castle von Frumpkin. Actually, we were uh, Happy Thanksgiving to you, Peter. I can't see your comment. I'm on a different different setup right now. Um, quick quick Thanksgiving story. We were uh, pouring. You know, we deep fry our turkeys. That's how we roll. That's that's what we do. We we deep fry the turkey. It's it's a great. A uh, great, great pastime for my family and I. And so um, we're deep frying the turkey and um, you got you to gotta pour oil in order to deep, do the deep frying. You got to pour the oil in. Super important thing to do when you're deep frying a turkey. You pour it into the electric. It's like an electric steel box. Hey, ah, ga, 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 ga. Tony Matura is wishing us a happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you from Tony. Guys, this is not Facebook Eve Alive. This is not. This is something completely different. This is a holiday. I invented a holiday eight years ago. That's right. You better believe it. I invented a holiday. It's called Tom Hanks Giving, a.k.a. T. Hanks Giving, because I realized that if you take the word Tom Hanks, or if you just take the first initial and the last name of Tom Hanks, you get thanks. You can find the name. Tom Hanks in the word Thanksgiving. And I said to myself, that is a great idea for a holiday. Much like Festivus for the rest of us, what if we had a holiday on Thanksgiving where you give Tom Hanks movies to your loved ones? That's right. That's what T. Hanksgiving is. So what you do is you get your Tom Hanks movie. It doesn't, you don't even have to actually give it to someone. You just, what you do is you, you take a picture, you hold it up like this, you know, and you shake hands. That's what you do. You shake hands and you hold it up and uh, you take a picture, you post it to social media. And what you're doing is you're setting an example because what does Tom Hanks represent? He represents goodness, wholesomeness, the, the, the American values that we really need in this country and um, really the world. And so one movie at a time as Tom Hanks is saving us from ourselves, perhaps, in fact, we can save the world itself by giving away Tom Hanks movies or giving out Tom Hanks movies. And so that, that is the, that's the plan. That's, that's what, that, that was the goal. And so in 2012, Thanksgiving, I gave the first Tom Hanks movie to what I determined was the guest of honor at my Thanksgiving dinner. So you got to pick someone. Preferably someone who maybe hasn't spent uh, spent Thanksgiving with you in the past. You pick someone out and you give them uh, a, a Tom Hanks movie and, and you shake their hand and that's how it works. And so um, this year with COVID and everything being super small, uh, we can't really, that's not really possible this year. It's uh, not, um, not doable. So you gotta, you gotta improvise. You gotta uh, uh, figure out uh, a, a better way to uh, do it. And and every year, what I do is I, I hop on here, usually from my personal page, not from uh, They Came From Lodi page. This was not supposed to be Misfits related in any way, shape, or form. Um, and, and what I do is with my, my Nana, my beloved Nana, um, we proselytize uh, the, the idea, the hobby, the, uh, the, the, the feeling of, of saying thanks, giving thanks with Tom Hanks. That's what you're doing. You're, you're giving thanks with Tom Hanks by giving a Tom Hanks movie to your friends and loved ones. Um, and it can be any movie that you want it to be, uh, but it has to have Tom Hanks in it, preferably starring Tom Hanks, I would say. And um, you just, that's what you do. Uh, and uh, right now, so usually I do this with my Nana. My Nana is 92 years old, right? I got a 92 year old Nana. And what we do is we talk about Tom Hanks and um, my Nana is unfortunately Rini. Some of you have seen her. She's in my movie, Romeo's distress. Um, she is unfortunately uh, in Arizona. It's not possible to, um, 
It's not possible to do it with her in the flesh, uh, uh, do this infomercial that we do every year since 2017, because what happened was um, Tom Hanks giving caught on and got so big, so fast that we needed to expand. And the way that we chose, choose, chose, choose, chose to expand was by um, uh, broadcasting to Facebook uh, and, and, and putting out our message uh, of, of sharing Tom Hanks with the world. So how does it work again exactly? Well, I'm going to tell you. Let's pretend that this is a Tom Hanks DVD. Pretend this is a Tom Hanks DVD of your choosing. What's a good Tom Hanks movie that you really like? I like a lot of Tom Hanks movies. Let's say that this is Joe versus the Volcano. So what you do is you go up to someone at your Thanksgiving party, preferably someone who you have not uh, seen or spoken to or you're sharing Thanksgiving with for the very first time. You walk up and you just say, I think I'd like to give you a little Tom Hanks in your life. You give him the Tom Hanks disc, you shake hands, you take a photo, you post it to the internet, and you make the world a better place. So, you know, in December, you use a Festivus poll, Festivus for the rest of us. You, you throw up the poll, you air your grievances, you have the feats of strength. Well, on, on Thanksgiving, we do Tom Hanks giving. That's what it is. We give thanks for Tom Hanks movies. That's what we do by giving them out to other people. And maybe, just maybe, if everybody in the world had a Tom Hanks movie, the world would be a better place. And so um, because my Nana is in Tucson, Arizona, um, we've, done, we've gone to extra trouble to bring you our, perhaps what is our last broadcast um, this year. Uh, so we pre-recorded our, our broadcast. And, you know, the conversation you're about to hear between Nana and I, uh, it starts off on our usual Thanksgiving, and then it turns to uh, presidents getting blowjobs in the White House. So just be be forewarned. My my 92 year old Nana, she can be very cheeky, and she she goes there. She goes there, uh, and then from there we started to discuss what it was like. Because you know, imagine being born in 1928 and seeing everything that happens in the world. My Nana has seen a lot of stuff. She lived through World War II, the Great Depression, all this stuff. So she relates, uh, she con compares and contrasts and relates what it's what COVID, the, the age of COVID uh, has been like in her overall span of her life, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and so we're going to go, I'm going to go live now with that. We're going we're gonna to roll that tape in just a second. Um, thank you so much for joining us this year. I wish we could have done this live in the flesh with Nana. We did the best we could. Um, tune in next year. We're, we're, we'll still be here next year. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if we'll all be here next year, but we'll, we'll be here next year. That's, that's the plan. Uh, and I just want to thank you all so much for, uh, tuning in and I hope you all have a wonderful, safe, delicious, uh, Thanksgiving dinner. As I said before, um, for anybody who's just joining us, we, we deep fry our Turkey. That's the way we roll. We deep fry it. Uh, oh, the story. I didn't tell the story. So here's the story. Here's what happened real quick before I roll the tape. Um, so somebody, person X, I'm not going to say who, I don't want to embarrass them. Somebody uh, uh, was very insistent in my family, was very insistent about pouring the peanut oil. It's a big gallon of peanut oil. Do you know how many fluid ounces are in a gallon of peanut oil? 128 fluid ounces. That's a lot of ounces. And so what happened? Hey, Bob, what's going on? We're just talking about the great peanut oil disaster of 2020. You're going to hear about it right now, Bob. Ha Happy Thanksgiving uh, to you guys. I hope you guys are having a good Thanksgiving. So what happens is person X in my family, who's going to remain anonymous, we're going to call them anonymous X. Anonymous X takes the peanut oil, lifts it up and pours it in, pours about half the peanut oil into our electric deep fryer. So the electric deep fryer, it's like a big aluminum box. It sits inside the kitchen, safely allows you to deep fry. You can deep fry your turkey outside in a giant trash can, but that's the easiest way to have it literally blow up in your face. Uh, so we're doing that. Um, and, you know, pr Anonymous X is wondering, why isn't the oil continuing to come out of the, the gallon container and go into the electric electronic deep fryer? And we're sitting there and we're scratching our heads and we're puzzling, wondering, wondering, wondering. And... Um, Lo and behold, it as it turns out, that's not possible because um, somebody left the little valve uh, undone. A gallon of peanut oil, ounces. I wanted to say gallons and gallons and gallons, but that would be a hyperbole because it's not gallons and gallons and gallons. It's ounces and ounces and ounces of peanut oil spill all over my parents' kitchen floor. That's right, people. Peanut oil. Stinky, greasy, oily peanut oil 
that would be a death sentence for anybody with a peanut allergy or a nut allergy in general spills all over the kitchen floor. And it was almost like a Thanksgiving Hanukkah miracle where we needed to stretch our oil to make it work for the size of our bird. And I'm happy to say that after some quick hustling, turns out we can still deep fry our turkey. But I'll tell you, the cleanup on that bird, on that floor, was unbelievable. And of course, there was a, there was a lot of excitement. Let's just say people were very animated. People were very happy. Um, it's not today. It's not a funny story. But I promise you, in a year's time, that is going to be the funniest Thanksgiving story, the funniest Tom Hanks story you could possibly imagine. Hilarious. Hilarious. Um, I think it's hilarious right now, personally. If it was in my kitchen, it would not be so hilarious. I'd be very, very upset. But right now, it's kind of funny. It's a funny story. Uh, so the oil spilled because Anonymous X is pouring the oil in. And meanwhile, like the spout. Okay, so if you imagine this is the, the, the peanut oil, right? We're going to use this as a diagram again. You pour the oil from the top, but there's a valve right here. The valve is undone. So as you're pouring your oil, oil is coming out the back at the same time. And it's getting lighter and lighter. And, and it get, keeps getting poured and poured. And Anonymous X is going, wait a minute. Where's all the oil? Why isn't it coming out? Turns around. Cheese and rice, there's oil all over the floor. And that's that. So that's our that's our story for Thanksgiving. We're, we have a small Thanksgiving party. It's just the six of us. Mom and dad, myself, Inav, my wife, and our two beautiful children, Jordan and Noah. Um, we're, we're, we're trying to say, hey, Tony, thanks so much. Tony Seacrest wishing me a happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Tony. I can't pull up people's comments right now. Uh, yes, Bob. Oh, Jesus is right. Oh, cheese and rice. It is right. Um, but yeah, so it was a, it was a whole mess. In any case, without further ado, I'd like to present to you um, a, a wonderful conversation that I had with my Nana as we continue to proselytize Tom Hanksgiving. Um, for those of you who are just joining us, Tom Hanksgiving is the process of giving a Tom Hanks DVD to, that's what you have to do on an infomercial. You have to continuously say the same thing over and over and over again because people come in, they join, then they leave. So again, for anybody who's just just uh, t- tuning in right now, uh, Tom Hanks giving, you take a Tom Hanks movie and you give it to a loved one. Uh, post your pictures online. Tag me in your photos. Tag hashtag Tom Hanks giving 2020 so that we can see all your wonderful photos because we make the world a better place when we're sharing Tom Hanks movies. What are some standout Tom Hanks performances? What about for you guys? Me? You got Apollo 13. You got uh, freaking Castaway. Uh, I heard Saving Mr. Oh, no. Saving Mr. Banks is pretty good. The Mr. Rogers movie, Won't You Be My Neighbor? I mean, Tom Hanks is good, wholesome, Norman Rockwell, Americana, wrapped up in a Thanksgiving package. How do we give thanks? We give Tom Hanks. That's what we do. Rolls right off the tongue. Uh, Bob, I will. I'll tell my wife, happy Thanksgiving. I surely will. We've got some delicious dishes. We do the sweet. I don't know what you guys do for for Thanksgiving, but for us, we do the sweet potato casserole with the toasted marshmallows on top. We do. uh, Yes, Big is a wonderful. uh, Bob says Big. Big is his pick for a Tom Hanks movie. That is a wonderful movie. Fun fact, Bob. Did you know that all the uh, amusement pier scenes were actually filmed at Rye Playland? How about that? How about that? Road Tony Seacrest says Road to Perdition. Yeah, Road to Perdition, 2003, a, a gangster, nail-biting gangster flick. Um, there's also The Green Mile. That's the one that uh, my Nana picks up. For me personally, I like That Thing You Do. Um, I kind of wish that Tom Hanks, Tom Hanks directed That Thing You Do, and I kind of wish that they gave him a Beatles movie. That's right. Could you imagine Tom Hanks doing the Beatles film? Or you give that to Steven Spielberg and then have Tom Hanks play Brian Epstein. That would be pretty cool. Although I think the Beatles are uncastable. You cannot cast the Beatles. Who would you get to fill those shoes? It's impossible. They did have Robert Carlyle play John Lennon in that Yesterday film by Danny Boyle, which I thought really, really worked really, really well. Um, He really embodied, he was channeling the spirit of John Lennon. It was really nice. I am getting so off track here, though. Let me me cut to this conversation, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to set this up right now. So here is our infomercial, probably the last one that's going to come to us in this sort of iteration, I'm sad to say, but that's life. The circle of life moves on. I'm, I'm fortunate and grateful and thankful that I ha- was able to chat with my Nana. And I'll tell you, there's not many people who were born in 1928 that can tell you about what life was really like 
in the world. And so these people are are special. These these old older people, these uh, oct octacarians and nintarians and centriarians. I don't know how you pronounce all those words. These people uh, are the are they they have the history is is up in their heads. They remember what it or things or whatever was really like at that time. When you ask them about World War II, they can tell you. You don't have to read in a history book. They were there. Eyewitness accounts. Um, these people need to be cherished. You need to talk to them every day. You need to check in with them. You need to let them know how much you love them. Uh, it's very important. Okay, without further ado, here it is. Happy Tom Hanksgiving. Gobble, 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 Okay, we're live. How you doing, Nana? What's going Hi. on? Hi. What's going on? Hi, I'm in Tucson, and it's it's okay. Everybody is wonderful here, and I'm enjoying being with my son and my daughter-in-law, and uh, things are going along day by day. What should I tell you? Day by day. Day by day. Day by day. Today, today is a very special day. That's right. Isn't it? That's right. We yes, but I have to tell you, yesterday was more special for me. Because Why? my grandson was 35 years old. That's right. And this guy that I love so much, who happens to be you. Oh, you're too kind. You I'm are not kind. kind. I'm telling you how I feel. It's not kind. It's love. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, so... So yeah, yesterday was my birthday and that does make it a special day. However, today is an equally special day. Not only is it Thanksgiving, we don't just celebrate Thanksgiving in this house. What do we celebrate, Nana? What is our special celebration? Tom Hanks giving. Oh yeah, Tom Hanks giving. Of course, Tom right. Hanks giving. Right. Our friend Tom Hanks. And what's really annoys me and, uh, you know, I just, I, I, I'm infuriated by this, is that, you know, um, everybody's, everybody has, like, you know, taken over Tom Hanks Giving. I started Tom Hanks Giving. I am the founder of Tom Hanks Giving in 2012, the history of Tom Hanks Giving. In 2012, I realized that if you put a dot in between T and H in T Hanks, that it spells thanks, or that it spells Tom Hanks that you can find Tom Hanks in the word thanks. And when I realized that a new holiday was born, a holiday that's not based on manifest destiny or you know um, uh, the, the inflicting harm upon indigenous peoples, this was a new holiday truly about the act of giving. And we call it T Hanks giving or in its new form, Tom Hanks giving. And right. what, what goes down on Tom Hanks giving, uh, Nana? What goes down? What do you mean down? Like, what do we do on Tom Hanks Giving? What is the act? How we do you have, celebrate? We have our family together. We celebrate our uh, with gratitude. We eat, 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 and uh, we just enjoy the day and give thanks for our country, our people, our children, our parents, God. Right, but what do, but Nana, but don't we, what, what, uh, what else do we do? What do we give on Tom Hanks giving? What is it that we give? We give, we give money, we give love. I don't know what you're talking about. Why are you, why are you giving me an examination? It's not and an examination. I don't even know what you're talking about. Nana, let me refresh your memory. It's been a whole year since we last did this. Every year we give Tom Hanks on T Hanks giving on Tom Hanks giving. We give a Tom Hanks movie to. Oh, right. I <laughs> forgot about it. That's okay. Nana. We, we give away a Tom Hanks movie. So what movie are we going to give this year? There's so many. To he didn't from, make Nana. too many movies this year. I don't know. Let's find that out. How many movies did Tom Hanks make this year? Let's find out. Let's let's go to the, the interwebs. I'm going to check right now. Tom Hanks. How many movies did Tom Hanks make this year? We'll go to the, his IMDb. And we're going to check for you right now. 
Um, there are a lot of Tom Hanks movies out there. I mean, you could endlessly watch Tom Hanks movies and, and never stop. High, high enough. Yeah. Hello, of, Inavi. Look how beautiful Inavi, Inavi looks. Inavi. Oh, I love you. Inavi. You look lovely. I love you. I miss you. We'll talk later. I made. I put on my makeup and everything. Oh, you look gorgeous. She says she put up, put on her makeup and everything, and she said that you look gorgeous. You, you'll you'll Skype with her in a little bit. I have headphones on, Nana, so she couldn't hear what you were saying initially. Oh, but okay. So Tom Hanks was working. He was he was playing Colonel Tom Parker in an untitled Elvis Presley project. So that should be interesting. Um, that's coming in 2021. I don't think it came. I don't think it came out yet. It didn't come out yet, Nana. It's coming in 2021. Well, we want one for now. I know, I know, Nana. All we have is now. All we have is the all now. we have is the moment. Each moment has its specialness. He played Jap uh, Captain Jefferson Kyle Kidd in News of the World. That's from 2020. He. Um, he was in he was in the new Borat movie for a moment because he got COVID and Borat gave him COVID yeah. as it turns out. Um, he was in a movie called Greyhound right. where he played. He, Captain uh, Rita Krause. too. Rita too. Listen, Rita. Rita got COVID also. Don't forget that. That's right. They His both wife. got COVID. Yep. Yep. He was in the Post uh, in 2017. That was wow. So he had a gap of two years where he didn't do anything. How about that? How about that? So what are we gonna what are we gonna give? Um, well, normally we have a guest of honor for T Hanks giving, and we don't have we're not having anybody for Thanksgiving. It's just the family. So I thought right. I thought since this might be your last Tom Hanks giving, that we might give to you the honorary title of guest of honor, the Tom Hanks guest of honor, uh, the title. To you, Nana. I want thank you. you. Oh, thank no, you. Oh. It really moves me Wait, and behooves me to say I am so grateful. I am moved and behooved. Wow. Thank you. I'm so glad that you're so touched. And I don't have a Tom Hanks movie to give you. Normally I do. But 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 that's okay. Because you said you would give it to me. That's all I need from you. Yes. And um, I, if I was out, uh, by the way, for those who are not aware, uh, I'm all the way here in New York and Nana's all the way in Tucson, Arizona, uh, where she right. really abides for, for the time being. And um, so we were not able to celebrate Thanksgiving and do our normal. We usually do an, We do an infomercial every single year about Tom Thanksgiving. And we weren't going to let any COVID or distance stop us from doing our infomercial. Because why are we doing this, Nana? What's the purpose of doing this infomercial? To give thanks to to have people realize how special Tom Hanks giving is to the world. That's true. We're also raising we are raising awareness. We are letting people know that they can do this. You, you people can do this. You can go out and you can uh, celebrate Tom Hanks giving. You can do it in your own home. You could do it today. Pull a Tom Hanks movie off the shelf and hand it to your loved one. Let them know how much you love them with the Tom Hanks movie. Right, right. You, you've got such good ideas, <laughs> Jeffy. Jeff. I know. I, I'm well aware. I'm well aware. And, you know, I think that if if we all gave each other Tom Hanks movies over and over again on on thanksgiving that i mean a lot of the world's problems might be solved by just by doing this you know that's that's my feeling on the on the subject with your you're frozen i'm sorry you're right am i if, right listen if it if, if everybody thought if everybody thought that life is good and walked the walk of kindness and love it would be a great world, but that's not the way the world is, is it? No, it's not. And, you know, unfortunately, um, 
we just gotta we just gotta uh, cope with with what there is. We just gotta deal with what there is to deal with, and that's just the way it is. But yeah. you know, we <laughs> we should still give Tom Hanks movies. You know what movie I haven't seen in a long time that I want to watch with Tom what? Hanks in it? What? Uh, that thing you do. Remember that movie? No. Is that that when he did music? Right. He played um, he played a manager. And he for a band yeah, called band the Wonders. Yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. doing that thing you do. Yeah. That's a pretty good one. What was the last Tom Hanks movie that you watched that really touched you? Oh, I used to, I, I loved a lot of his movies. The The Green Mile. Oh, the that's Mar- a good one. The uh, uh, the where he played when the a very old one where he. He was young. He he they he did uh, music on a, a floor with a piano. Oh, big, big. Do you know that some of that was filmed at Rye Playland? All the amusement park scenes. Really, I yeah. didn't. Know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, he's he's just a he's every he's a Tom Hanks is an every man. I say this every year. He's an every man. He's not terribly good looking. He's a nice looking man and he just exudes goodness. I've never seen him play a part where he's mean. Have right. you? No, I never have. Never truly never. have. Um, and he's done a few mysteries also that were very good. He likes mysteries. He's a real mystery kind of guy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's his, and, that's part of his I bag. Like, I like the idea that he's happily married to Rita for so many years and that they seem to be a couple that are not typical Hollywood. Right. They are a couple. And he's very, very influential in his in his uh, business. He uh, he is desired by very important people and he has access to a lot of people who will pay to have his movies made. That's right. You can pretty much guarantee funding with a Tom Hanks movie. Absolutely. He, his name goes a very long way. Especially when you have a Tom Hanks, Steven Spielberg collab combo. I that's, mean, that's who I'm talking about for uh, the most part. I forgot his name, Spielberg and him. They are a pair and they can go anywhere with their partnership. True. Let me ask you this. Um, what was Thanksgiving like for you growing up? Do you remember Thanksgivings when you were young, when you were a little girl, anything like that? Well, same, same old, same old. My parents would make a Thanksgiving. Oh, we would go out. Now I remember many times when I was growing up, you know, I knew my husband when I was very young, right? Yes. Many times on Thanksgiving, his family and my family would go out for Thanksgiving to a restaurant. Really? Yes. We would have Thanksgiving in a restaurant and Eddie and I would be there. We were kids and he would Eddie's my grandfather, everyone. <laughs> he would <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And as I grew older, of course, he kicked me under the table or something. But you know, I'd flirt with him. I always had a crush, <laughs> a terror, big crush on him when I was very young. My mother should have sent me to a psychiatrist before <laughs> a kid that young to have such a crush as there's something wrong with her. Let me ask you this. What so so but was that common growing up? Was that common? I guess I'm thinking of like we're talking about the 1930s people. So is that common for people to go out to eat on Thanksgiving or are well, the restaurants are open? I don't remember the 30s that much. I was born in 28. Uh, uh yeah, it was a common common. We would go to a restaurant, they would have turkey dinners. Would be advertised, and the the mothers didn't want to cook, so we went out. 
Yeah. Just like today, the mothers don't want to cook, so they hire, they rent, they uh, they order it. What about um, what about uh, Christmases on Christmas? Because we're Jews, everybody. What would you guys do on Christmas? Would you go out for uh, Chinese food growing up? Yeah. And when my kids were small, I even had a Christmas tree and a Hanukkah bush. <laughs> because I wasn't religious. I had a little, yeah. da- Papa and I had a little Christmas tree and we would, the kids would get up in the morning and see it in their eyes. I, I, I even have movies of that someplace, Jeffrey. Yeah, I know. I think I have yeah. those movies now. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's interesting how it, it, you look at a Christmas tree. It's not a religious object to you. It's just a, a cultural object. It's a, right. America, right? Right. Yeah, right. it's pretty interesting. Um, and then let me ask you this. Uh, and then as you got older or as, you know, Thanksgivings would pass eventually. Did you did you continue to go out to eat? Like when mom and, and Uncle Rick were small, or did you guys do you guys had all your family friends and stuff? You would just have Thanksgivings together, right? Like, yeah, or or at home, or I I'd have no, I would have my family over. I would do the cooking and have my in-laws and my parents over for Thanksgiving and make it a family affair. And then there were many Thanksgivings where I just had some friends and my grandkids and Mindy and Ricky because I lived in Tucson. Right. So Thanksgiving kept changing as far as who sat at my table, depending where Rini and Eddie's ass were at the time. Well, I'll tell you the best Thanksgivings that I remember are the ones where you were with us. And, you know, these last couple of Thanksgivings were, were very magical having you at the table where in our house, we, in our household, in the house of from us, we, we deep fry our turkeys and that deep I fried know, turkey is something else. You can't go wrong and with you, deep fried turkey. And your father is very, very happy with Thanksgiving. He loves that holiday. He loves it. It's a big, yeah. it's a big, it's a big to do. I think it's T- today's very small, but yeah. yeah, yeah. You got to, you know, that's the thing. Even when there's there's no reason to do it, you still got to do it because if you don't do it, then it then it doesn't exist anymore. So it's like, right. you know, if you don't but do it, you will. But we, I miss uh, Stephen being at the table for Thanksgiving. Oh, I know yeah, Stephen. Stephen. Right. Him. Stephen yeah. is, he misses being with the family on yeah. Thanksgiving very, very much. Well, you know what we could do? You know, he could watch a tom hanks movie just to keep him occupied on this very lonesome holiday for him who is that coming oh look who it is look who it is look at who it is three generations together hello she can't hear she can't hear you because you're on headphones she doesn't she can hear no she can hear you you can't hear her that's what i meant to say mom do you have say it out loud you can say it out loud mom she can i love you mama well, now, mom, let me ask you a question. What is it? Uh, here, come here. Come here. Oh, don't cry, mom. Don't cry. We're we're live don't on I the we're I'm live on the makeup. internet right now. <laughs> I'm wearing makeup. Yeah. <laughs> hey, mom. Let me ask you this. So what? Um. So so what? Tom Hanks movie do you really uh uh enjoy? What was something that you watched recently that was Tom Hanks that that really spoke to you? Here we can you can. Off. Go ahead. Oh, I love Forrest Gump. Yeah, but that's an old one. Is there I anything know. that you've seen recently of Tom Hanks that just sort of... What did, she, what did she say? She loved what? She loves Forrest Gump. Um, oh, yeah. For, I forgot Forrest Gump. That's one of his most famous... Some examples. I'm not a big I fan of the message wait, of Forrest wait, Gump. Wait, wait. Give me, give me Neither am I. examples. Um... I mean, Tom Hanks movies. You know Tom Hanks movies. I know, but there's Castaway. There's... Castaway. We talk about Castaway every year. I didn't like pre- Predition. Perdish, Road Predition. to Perdition. Road to Perdition. What about Joe versus the Volcano? That's a, You know, we should watch that, actually, tonight. You know I would watch I, that. Do you want to watch that? You know what I like? What? I like the World War II movie. Right, Saving Private Ryan. Saving Private Ryan. Oh, yeah, that was wonderful. Yes. yes. Oh, Tom Mr. Hanks is an empress. Yeah, Mr. Rogers. Huh? Mr. Rogers. I love yeah. Mr. Rogers. There you go. 
such a tender, sweet story yes. about a man with a soul and a heart. Yes. <laughs> Isn't he wonderful? He's wonderful. 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 He's wonderful, truly. So, you know. Okay, I'll leave you guys. Mwah. Nice nice to see you, darling. She says, nice to see you, darling. I'll talk to you, darling. Okay, darling. You guys talk darling. every day. You know, it's twice funny. You guys talk twice a day. And Nana, you and I, we talk. We talk yes. once a day. So, right. you know, and today will probably be twice a day. So, point is, Tom Hanks brings people together. You know, if you give, let's say that, let me give you a scenario, Nana. You, you let me know if this, if this makes sense to you. Let's say that Tom, let's say that you don't like your neighbor. Let's say that you're, you're and I'm very fortunate because I love my neighbors. I love all my neighbors, great neighbors. I have a wonderful community. You've met some of them. But let's say that you didn't like your neighbors and you wanted to bury the hatchet. Um, you could go to Best Buy. You could buy a Tom Hanks movie and give it to them for Thanksgiving. I could if I wanted to. Do you but think I that? Don't have any, I don't have any neighbors that I have to give it to. I know. It's very sad. You, you have that who, owl. You have the owl in the in the in the rafter or whatever. Yeah, you know, I received a wonderful, wonderful letter from your uncle Richard. Just oh yeah, a wonderful letter. Yeah. yeah, he's he's the cat's meow, isn't he? One of them. He's, yeah, he was very loving and kind. It was a beautiful. It's beautiful. I'm sorry that he can't join us this year. It's a, it's a real shame. Yeah, look, life. Listen, Jeffrey, never in all of my years, and I've been 1928 until now, God never has it been as bad in this country. Oh, yeah, that's something that's interesting. You've said that before. All right. So let's 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 just let's let's unravel this onion and then we'll 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 we'll, we'll cat we'll put a pin in it. Let me ask you this. So you 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 have seen a lot of stuff. I mean a lot of stuff. You've you were born in 28. That's when the big stock market crash happened. Uh, yeah. You that. But then you lived through the Great Depression. Right. You lived through the rise I didn't of Hitler. Feel a, a, no. uh, say that again. You, you broke up. Say that again. The rise of Hitler. I said I didn't feel the Great Depression. My father always, uh, we, I'm, we had money. I don't know. Right. You were you were fortunate to not feel the effects, but you still right. lived through the Great right. Depression. Yes. So you lived through the Great Depression. You the see rise World of War Hitler. II. The rise of Hitler. World War II happens. Yes. You watch that, the, the war effort. You see uh, then the Korean War happens, which I yes. don't think, I, I, I'm curious to know, you know how like with the war effort in World War II, obviously America like economically you know, everybody's, you know, got to ration stuff, you know, contribute to the war effort. Was it the same? Did you feel that same sort of pull during the Korean War? No. It was only World War no, II. No, I think that they only, uh, they only, cons cons they only had volunteer, a volunteer army. There was no, no uh, cons conscription. Conscription. But that's not what I mean. I just mean in the sense of like, oh, we have to save our tin to give to the war effort, you know, that sort of thing. Like, well, uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, we gave to the war effort, but it was it wasn't the same. It, it we didn't feel it in the country at all. What about like the um, Vietnam War? Right, and then what about? Let me ask you this: What about? The, the 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 idea of like the red menace like the communist scare that happened in the 50s was that like yeah. was that like a big deal like you're in your neighborhood and you don't like if someone's a communist or you hear rumors about someone no, being a just communist the you're talking about the mccarthy era yeah no no uh, you just heard it on television just like you do now it didn't affect me at all I I was too busy raising my family and thinking of other things. What about um and then JFK is killed and that was like your 911. No, you the Vietnam War. No, but I'm saying before the Vietnam War happens, JFK is assassinated. No, it, he was assassinated afterwards. Nana. JFK was assassinated in 1963. 
And when was the Vietnam War? I think 1964, 65. All I know is... I'm going to check that, that right now. Yeah, I think you're wrong because, okay. of, because we didn't want Rick to go and we were willing to move to Canada. Okay, you know what's crazy? I have to tell you, I, I have to put my foot in my mouth. You know why? Why? Because from what Wikipedia says, the Vietnam War began November 1st in 1955 and ended April 30th, 1975. However, so it was a 20 year war, but but when uh, Vietnam War, when did America get involved in the Vietnam War? America, when? enter here, I'm checking right now. March, 1965, so only for half the war. So the conflict started in 55, but it didn't, America didn't join under Lyndon B. Johnson. So can it, so that's what, but that's what my point is that, you know, JFK getting assassinated is a national friggin' tragedy that happened. And like, all I ever hear from older generations is like, where were you when you heard that JFK was assassinated? You know? I know where I was. Where were you? I was walking out of Lomans with my sister shopping when we heard it. And was it shocking? Shocking, devastated. Was it, let me ask you this, and I don't know if you can make the comparison. And again, I know I'm like asking you like to recall this crazy history, but uh, so I apologize for that. But do you think, was it, was 9-11 more shocking than JFK or was JFK more shocking? Oh God, I, I can't. You know, if you cut one finger and you cut the other finger, they both hurt. This is they both whenever, hurt. whenever my dad, whenever we asked my mom, who did you, whenever I would ask my mother, who do you love more, myself or my brother, Stephen, she would quote my Nana, who said the same thing to her and to our, my uncle Rick, when they say, who do you love more? And she heard it from her parents and it's if you cut one finger you cut the other finger they're both gonna they're both gonna height equally and so exactly exactly so okay fine fine um but you know what's interesting the culture is different the culture of the of the early 1960s when like everything's like perfect i don't literally mean perfect but like the the nuclear family and like the rise of the economy and then jfk boom shot like shatters that shatters some of that and so is it is it do you think that's more i I, there's no way to say one's more devastating than the other but i'm just talking about shock because think about all the stuff that happened after jfk that i can't measure i can't i was shocked with both you can't, you can't, I can't measure. measure it. Fair enough. Fair enough. And then um, the 60s happen. The 60s are crazy. You know, hippies and blah, 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 blah. Music free and the love, Beatles. Free love. Free when, love. You know what? I'm going to tell you something. Tell me. When, when, uh, oh yeah, I forgot his name. When the president. Uh, uh, Lyndon B. Johnson? No, go, go, go up. Rick Nixon. No. Ford? No. <laughs> okay. Hillary's husband. Bill Clinton. When Bill Clinton, I blame Bill Clinton for the free love that happened in our country. Really? He started it with going under the table with his girlfriend. Right, right. What, ha- what was that about, Nana? What happened with that? What was her name? You know, my, I'm a, I forget names and places. He had a he had a young girl. Yeah. Who was a uh, like you know one of the Washington kids that were, and she fell in love with him. A nice little Jewish girl. Her father was a doctor. Monica Lewinsky. Monica, yeah, Monica. And what happened? And Monica fell in love with him. Yeah. And he utilized her by having sex with her under his desk. She would go under his desk and give him a uh, a, a 
uh, a suck job. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the words. Blow job, Nana. Blow job. A blow job. She <laughs> would give him a blow job. She would he even, and afterwards, she even describes his penis that went a little to the left and it had a mark on it. I mean, it was unbelievable. And I believe that he started that free love business. What about the Everybody 60s, Nana? Free love. Yeah, but but it became it became okay now. It's yeah. okay. Wait, so are you trying to say that Clinton getting a beach in office allowed Trump to say what he said and it's acceptable that he said I moved on her like a bitch in heat or whatever, you know, like uh, I you just grabbed. No, I don't the... believe anything that Trump says is is relative to Clinton. Clinton is a is a wonderful man compared to that orange buffoon. Yeah, I'm glad he's out. I I mean, Clinton at least he loved his country. Yeah, he did uh, love his country. Yeah, well. Would you say that that orange buffoon loved his country or he only loved the orange buffoon? He only loved the orange buffoon. Oh exactly. That's and I hope he goes to jail. Yeah, me too. Me too. I just messed up my hair. I look like, now I look like a buffoon. No, you look good. You look good. Thank you. Look good. No, so my point is, but then you have, you have Watergate happens. Nixon uh, tells everybody he's not a crook. I mean, you've seen- so much stuff, Nana, over there. Yeah, right. You saw it all. Right. You saw it and, all. And each time I want to bring out, and with each generation, with each uh, president, the whatever happened, whatever went down, the United States rose above it, and it will this time too. We have a, a leader that will, I think, will soothe this country. I don't know whether he could bring it all together because it's quite divided, but right. he will bring some uh, something to it that we haven't had in four years. He will bring a love and a tenderness for our country that nobody wanted to talk about in that administration. Now, now to, to rewind for a second, to bring it back, to bring it all the way back for one second. Um, I just remembered one more movie. What? Um, he played Walt Disney. Oh, yeah. That Mr. Banks. Big, Mr. Banks. That was a very good movie. Mr. Yeah. Banks. Thank you. Thank you. We're talking about all the stuff that, well, I'm sure you'll rewatch this when, it, when, we, right. when we broadcast it just about all the stuff that Nana has seen and been through. And just, it's just amazing how she's, uh, <laughs> you know how uh, much I love you. She knows, she knows, she knows that if you cut off one finger, it's going to hurt just as much as if you cut off the other finger. Right. right. <laughs> the fingers, they get cut off. <laughs> my no, mother I, taught, my mother taught me that. I know. I know. And you know what I still have? I have, so I am in possession, people, of a table that's over 120 years old, I believe. It was the table that my Nana used to eat at when she was a little girl. And right. it's still in my possession. I use it as a desk in the basement. And someday right. when my son moves out of my house and he goes to college or he goes to the whatever, I'm going to go, here, you take the Hurwitz table now, use it in good health. Don't break it because I'll break your neck. And not literally, but you know, I'll be very upset. <laughs> and that table, you know, sometimes we don't get to pick our family heirlooms, people. We don't get to choose what gets passed down. It's whatever survives. Whatever survives becomes a family heirloom. It was, right. you know, and when you touch that object, you're touching something that your ancestors touched, that your ancestors sat at, that your ancestors laughed at, that your ancestors cried at. And it's just a, it's a beautiful, it's a touchstone. It's a, it's a corporeal touchstone that connects us through generations. I used to sit at that table. Mommy, I want meatballs, mommy. Mommy, I want ice cream, mommy. I grew up at that table. Isn't that crazy? And now the table is in the basement and I grew up at that table too because it was in my house. 
And my my uh, child, my my son grew up at that table when it was in our apartment, you know? Unbelievable. Uh, four generations, well, five, five generations at that table. I'm sure that my parents, when they bought that table, did they not never, realize they had no where idea. it was going to go. And the tales that it could tell if it only could talk. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh boy. So glad that table can't talk. Um, <laughs> but you know, what's interesting is that that table got covered with mold at one point because it was sitting in a garage. I rescued it. I soaked it in vinegar and I wiped it down. And boy, that table is, is a million bucks today. I saved that table from destruction. Thank God. I want to ask you something. Yeah. Papa had given you a tremendous amount of stamps. I still have stamps. them. Yeah, did they, did they didn't get moldy, did they? Um, I they are packed away and they uh they're fine. And I also have the oh, coin collection. He gave me all the pennies that he used to. Yeah, collect. good. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's worth that's worth a lot of money if you want. I don't know. If, I don't think I would ever cash it in, but I don't think it's really worth it. The only thing that's worth money are the stainless steel pennies from the during World War II that because they needed uh -huh. copper. And they would use uh -huh. stainless steel. Those, those might be actually worth something, but I would never sell them because they're my, they're it's family heirloom. I just wouldn't. That's your heirlooms also. Yeah, you know. So I would never, I would never really sell. It. But wait, hold on. To fast forward, the reason why we're talking about history and all this stuff, let's get to the to the. I know this episode of of Tom Hanks giving got really deep. This it's a yearly tradition that we do this. We've been doing this since 2017, if you can believe it. So this is actually our fourth year. Although I can't. Wow. Of the yeah, four years of doing this. Here's my question to you, which brings us back to the beginning of of this conversation. Do you think? You think that COVID is the single biggest disaster that you have experienced since 1928? Yes. How? Why? I just can't believe that. I can't. So you're saying COVID is COVID is crazier than the Great Depression? Yes. Be worse than the Second World War. Worse than the Second World War. Absolutely. Absolutely. W living here in the United States. We didn't feel the Second World War. It was done right. in Europe. It was done in Ru in Russia. Right. This is so you're talking about from an American backyard. perspective. You're talking about from an American perspective, though. So you're not talking about from a world perspective. From a world perspective, it's this is the worst. It's all over the world. People Even, are dying. Yeah, but more than the World War, you're saying, but that's my point. You said you didn't feel the effects because you were in America. The, you're telling, you think someone in Europe would think that World War II was not worse than COVID? I, I think at this point, they would probably think, I'm very friendly with uh, Anna Marie Albagatti, yeah. who was a, yeah, a, she was a, yeah, a movie star. Yeah. And she grew up in Italy. Yeah. And she under Mussolini and all right. that stuff. And uh, she feels that this is worse. Wow. Than in Europe. I guess that really says it all. And what was the reason you, you started to talk and I interrupted you? I'm sorry. You were saying because you didn't feel it? We didn't feel it here. We, I, I, I what did I feel that, that, that I, we had to wait with coupons to get meat? or that I couldn't get a pair of silk stockings. Explain that. Explain the coupons with meat during World War II. They, they, they issued coupons for, for meat and because it, there was a shortage and, and gas. So what does that mean when you have a coupon? That means you don't get it if you don't have a coupon for it. There were certain, no, there were certain days that your coupon was good to get it. They would, they would have days for different people to be able to get their rations. And could you imagine, now let's take that, you know, you just bring up something, a very interesting point. Could you imagine trying to do, give that to people in today's world when they can't even put on a mask during this COVID-19 crisis? Like the, yeah. the America of today would never have lasted during World War II. Why do you say that? I don't understand. Okay, let me break this down for you. You, you. you brought up a very interesting point. You're talking about the idea, the concept of rationing coupons for gas and meat and silk stockings and things. And my point is this, is that 
we live in right now, we just went through a whole thing where there was a pandemic and people were told that if you wear a mask, if you, if you bunk, if you buckle down for, for a while, if you try not to engage each other in public spaces, if you take these small amounts of personal, um, you know, uh, uh, preparation and personal responsibility, which in itself is a very American concept. If you think about World War II and what people had to do during World War II. Now imagine we're fighting World War III, but it's not with like atom bombs. It's much like World War II where it's just, you know, bullets and, and knives and, and, and bombs and stuff. And you're telling people, oh, you can't get meat. You need a coupon for meat. You can't get gas. And imagine people in the middle of this country just going like, the hell I won't. And like taking it with their guns or trying to, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's different today. People would never stand for that, even if we were fighting a world war. I don't know about that. If the gun, if we had a different president at the helm who united people, they would stand for it. But that's my point, Nana. We don't have, we didn't have that president. If we had- oh, right. So what happened when, when all this took place? Even your parents went to the supermarket and bought all the toilet paper they could buy off the shelves. My and parents? All the, I mean, old people, they were busy stocking up, doing right. the same thing on whether you're a, a Trumpite or you're not a Trumpite. Yeah, but my, but what's interesting is that you think about you think about what people are willing to do in during the war, war effort in World War II. You know, the, like the personal response. Oh, we're we're collecting tin, we're collecting scrap metal. You know, yeah. we're join the effort. It was a it was a national effort to support the troops across the sea, and here we had no national effort. It was every it was chaos, and two hundred a quarter of a million people have died. And That's some what people, I'm telling you. so it's much worse than anything we've ever experienced in this yeah. country. I guess you're right in that in this more country, more people yeah. died than in the Second World War. Yeah, if, they've said I mean, that. Yeah, they've said that about World War One, Vietnam, and the Second World War. More people have died from COVID. Yeah, I mean, come on, this is a catastrophe that has absolutely been unknown to the people of this country fascinating this that what a fascinating notion i never i you you just put that in such perspective for me i never really thought about it in that kind of way that that's interesting to me at least so well tom hanks thinks it's interesting too tom hanks got covid tom hanks got covid in australia and then what did yeah. he do he hunkered down and watched Tom Hanks movies with Rita Wilson until it with was over. Rita, with yeah. Rita, always yeah. Tom and Rita. Did they star in any movies together? She's been in some of, I think, it, as a, she had, always plays the second fiddle in oh in yeah movies. I don't know whether she ever was in a movie with him, but yeah. she never uh, she never made it to the top echelon as far as you know being a. Uh, being the star of a movie. Right, not like second her husband. Fiddle. No, yeah, second fiddle. Yeah. But who cares? She's married to Tom Hanks. He's a terrific guy. He is, he is. Do you know he's re he's a typewriter enthusiast too. He loves typewriters. Oh yeah, does he collect them? He collects them and he has an app on the, that you can get on your phone. It's like a typewriting app where you have yeah. like, I, I, it's called a, uh, I think it's called Hanks or something. It's like a typewriter. But Hanks is spelled with an X at the end. H-A-N-X. Hanks. Yeah. Something and what like does it do? It just, it's like a word processor, but, you know, just doesn't, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't know. Anyhow, it's, it's really been nice to celebrate the Tom Hanks of 202. Two O with you, my darling boy. Truly, this was this was special and beyond what people could possibly understand. Why this year was so special and the effort to to, to get this together because we were supposed to do this through my other broadcasting software and we were having problems on the other end and we had to do it this way. So this is pre-recorded for you people and 
I'm going to go on now. I'm going to go on Facebook Live and I'll broadcast it. And listen, just remember this year to be good and to be kind to one another and give Tom Hanks movies and cut, give each other breaks. And uh, let's look to 2021. You know, uh, there's a Who song. Uh, and it's, uh, it's very poignant. It was actually written about the First World War when it came out. Uh, and it's called Got a Feeling 21 is going to be a good year. Got a feeling 21 is going to be a good year. Got a feeling 21 is going to be a good year. Especially if you and me can make it through together. Got a feeling 21 is going to be a great year. Are you, can, you, can you make this uh, not as long? It's, a, it's very, a very long no, interview. no, it's it, nothing gets nothing gets cut out of this. This is this is our final one, and it has to remain what it is, and that's okay. And you know, if people find it interesting, that's good. And if they don't find it interesting, <laughs> right up there, up. We'll tickle, we'll tickle their sphincter like that. That's what we'll okay. do. You know. Okay. Listen, I love you. I'll see you at the dinner table. Um, I love you. We'll uh, we'll. we'll We'll be back in some way, shape, or form next year. No matter what, we'll be back. I love you so much. I love you so much, too. Au revoir. Au revoir. Goodbye. I got to tell you, I love that woman. So that was our pre-broadcast. You heard it. It's... uh. Oh, wait, let me just take that again. Yeah, you know, wasn't that special? Truly, this was a uh, a challenging, difficult uh, Tom Hanks giving 2020. Considering the circumstances, I think we're doing pretty good. We did, you know, you do the best that you can. And uh, that's what we did. We did the best that we can this year. So, yeah, I'm coming right now. All right, I'm coming right now. That's my wife calling. She wants me to come in. Watch the kids so we can serve dinner. Our our, our turkey is fried. Uh, everything's good to go. Um, if this this is for the YouTube crowd, when this goes on YouTube, please uh, subscribe, like, comment, yada yada yada. You know the drill. Give your loved ones some 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 wonderful Tom Hanks uh, stuff, uh, movies, tchotchkes, yada yada yada. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Uh, I'm starving. I want to go downstairs and eat, so I'm gonna do that. And, you know, it's like what Farmer Vincent says in Motel Hell, meets meat and a man got to eat. And so that is exactly what we're going to do. Um, we'll see you next year. OK, we'll see you next year. Same bat time, same bat channel one year from today. I don't know what it's going to look like. It's going to be a whole new different type of show. Um, change changes of personnel happen. Uh, I, this won't make sense now, but it will make sense in the future. Hey, Rue. Rue Morg is here. Rue, we've you've been missing in action, buddy. We have not seen you around lately, but it's good to see you, man. Wishing you and your loved ones, Rue, and your, your family a, a wonderful, happy, safe Thanksgiving. Um, got a cool show lined up for Sunday, by the way, but that's a, a, a whole different thing. Okay. Peace and hair grease, everyone.